Hi, you're watching BK Hobby, and welcome back to the OpenHab Basic Series. In the last video, I showed you what things, channels, and bindings mean in the OpenHab configuration. We also directly interacted with the thing objects through the paper UI. In this video, I'll show you the next and probably the most important building block of the OpenHab configuration, the item. Items are a virtual representation of state in the OpenHab system, for example, the color of the hue light bulb or whether the bulb is turned on or off. Items are usually linked to specific channels on the thing, but there can also be standalone items that only store a value or setting. For example, a switch that you can use to tell OpenHab whether you're home or away, or a default color you want your LED strips to show when first turned on. These standalone items are often used in automation rules, which is a topic we'll be tackling in a future video. For now, just remember that an item stores a state. So what do I mean by storing state? If you have a programming background, items are basically variables in your program that store a value used by the rest of your program. In the same way, items store a value which can be set by the thing channel they're linked to, the user interface, a rule, or a persistent strategy. More about those later. Just like there are different types of variables in the computer program, there are different types of items for all the different types of data that they need to store. A string item is used to store just a basic character string. A datetime item is a slightly different example of a string item that specifically stores time values. A number item stores numerical data, for example, sensor temperature. Color items store color data, for example, the hue bulb color. Dimmer items store percentage values, for example, bulb brightness or audio volume and switch items store the on-off position of a switch. There are a few other types of items that you can use. These are just some examples. For a full list and description of each, check out the OpenHab documentation site. I'll link to it in the video description. One additional special type of item I want to show you is a group item. Group items allow you to organize several individual items. This can be done to either control multiple item states and their associated think channels with one switch or dimmer, for example. Groups can also be used to logically organize multiple related items. For example, all items that correspond to devices in the room of your house. Look at these kitchen island lights I have in my setup. Each light bulb is a separate thing in my OpenHAP configuration, and each thing is linked to a different dimmer item, left, center, and right. I can control each of them individually with the sliders for each light bulb, but I can also control them with a single slider. When I change the group dimmer item state, all three dimmer items within the group change to the same position. This gives me the flexibility to set up different scenes using an individual light or control the group as a single light. The second example you see here is a switch group. Notice that the group switch can control a switch, but also a dimmer. In this case, if I turn the switch off, the dimmer item will be set to 0% brightness. But if I set it to on, it will return to the previous setting, not necessarily 100%. The final example is the organization group. This is a standalone item of type group, which I have named office. I will use this group to organize all the devices I have in my office. One great thing about OpenHab is that there's always more than one way of doing things. But that also makes OpenHab confusing and intimidating to most new users. I'll show you a couple of ways you can add and configure items in your OpenHab system, including a very easy way using paper UI, but I'll also show you my preferred method to use, which is config files. I prefer configuration files because I can split up my items by function, quickly modify multiple items and their parameters, and easily backup, restore, and move my OpenHab configuration between my development and production Raspberry Pis. So if you followed the series from the start, I had you install OpenHab with the demo configuration. If you did that, you already have some items defined in your OpenHab system. This is great for getting familiar with the system, but the item names end up being pretty non-descriptive and I would rather show you how to do this yourself. So the first thing we'll need to do is go into the paper UI, the configuration section, and the system page. On it, you'll find this item linking option with simple mode enabled. When enabled, OpenHab will automatically create an item and link it to a channel on every new thing you add. We want to do this ourselves, so let's disable this option for now and hit save. As soon as I do that, you will notice that a new page popped up in the configuration section for items. When I click on it, you'll see that I already have a number of items, some automatically created for the thing channels we added in the last video, others created by the demo configuration files. Take a look at all these different items and their types. 
you see some group switch contact dimmer as well as color items okay so first I'm going to show you how to add an item using the paper UI so to add a new item we'll just click a plus sign and first we'll fill out the name so in my case I'm going to add family underscore lamp underscore color because I will be using this item to store the family room lamps hue light bulb color channel next thing I need to do is add a label to this and the label is the descriptive name that will show up in the user interface when we get to that point so you want to make this something that you will recognize so we'll just call it family room lamp color and obviously the type of the item will be color and if you don't know what item type to use you can go back to your things page click on the thing and look at its channels if you look at the channels here you can actually get the item type that the channel requires. So this channel, this color channel requires a color item. The color temperature channel requires a dimmer item. So now I'm back in my item definition. One other thing that I need to define is the category. And the category actually refers to the icon that will be used for the item in the user interface. So in order to find out what to put in here, you can open up this icons page in the OpenHab documentation website. I will add a link to this in the video description below. So this is the standard classic icon set from OpenHab. You can add your own, and I will show you how to do that in a future video. But there are plenty to choose from in the classic icon set. So since the item refers to color, I'll use this color wheel icon. And I'll paste the icon name directly into this field. And you can see the icon already pops up. Now this last field here, the parent groups field, is where you would define what group this item belongs to. So if this was a switch and we wanted to control multiple items using one group switch, we would select the group switch item name here. But in this case, I just have a single item for a lamp that's in my family room. So I will select the family room group organization item. Now I'll click the plus sign and now my item has been created and it is right here. If I want to edit anything about this item or delete it, I would just have to click on one of these two buttons. And you have to repeat this process for every new item that you create using the paper UI. So after we've created an item, I want to bring up the most important point here. All we have right now is a standalone item. Remember when I mentioned those at the beginning of the video? Even though my item is named Family Room Lamp Color, it's not currently linked to anything. So even if I would change the color of the item, I'm only changing the item state and not the hue bulbs color channel. So the next thing we need to do is to actually link this item to the correct thing channel. So for that, we'll go back to the things page and we'll click on the hue color family lamp thing. And here in my channel section, I'll click on the link and it will show me all of the items that are currently linked to this channel. And the item you see here is just the automatically generated link that we talked about before. So I'm going to delete this one. And now I'll click on the plus sign by the linked items and I'll select the item to link which is family room lamp color. Click link and you see the circle filled back in which means that I do have an item linked to that channel. So now we have this thing, the hue color light bulb in the family room lamp linked to the item that corresponds to its state. And you will notice that I created the thing and the, and the item all using the paper UI. But I'm sure you realize if I had to create multiple items and multiple links with the larger system this would take a long time. So I'm going to show you the way I prefer to do these using configuration files in Visual Studio Code. If you click on items in your OpenHab configuration folder, and if you follow my previous videos and set up the demo configuration, you will notice that you already have a demo.items file. You can use this file to get an idea of how items are defined and even make changes to them and see how they affect the user interface that was already created for the demo configuration. But if you don't have this file, you can create a new items file by clicking this new file icon and we'll name our items file lights.items. You can create as many items files as you want and organize your items in any way you want. For example, splitting your items out by function or device type. And now because we have OpenHab connected to Visual Studio Code using the OpenHab extension, creating items files within VS Code is actually very easy as well. You just click on the OpenHab extension here and we'll open up this thing section and we actually have all of our things already listed here. So I can actually click on the hue color family lamp thing, 
right click on it and select create items from channels. And you will notice that that inserted an item of the correct item type, color, dimmer, string, or switch for all four of these channels that are part of the hue light bulb thing. So I'll explain to you what the, what the statement is made up of. The first part of the statement is the item type. This is the same as the color type that we selected here. The next portion of the statement is the item name, and that is the item name selected here. So I will copy this and change this item's name to match. This portion of text in the quotation marks is the label. So it, it corresponds to this text box in Paper UI. Now this final portion right here is the channel link. Now what's missing from here is the category or the icon and the group membership. So in order to add those, I will copy this color wheel icon name. And in order to specify the category, you need the less than greater than signs. And you just copy the text in between. For the group membership, you need open and close parentheses. And I will type the name of the group item, GF underscore family, into those. And you will notice as soon as I start typing the name, VS Code pops up this autocomplete dialog, and I can select the group item from here. So I will click on GF family, and there it is. So that's it. Once I hit save, these items are created, and I can use them in the rest of the configuration. The benefit of having items in configuration files is that I can make changes to multiple items quickly. For example, the labels, icons, group membership, etc. And once your system grows to a larger size with more devices and channels and items for those channels, you will probably also find it easier to work with configuration files instead of the web-based user interface. Okay, so now that you've learned about things and items and how to link them, you could take a small detour here and use Hap Panel to create a beautiful, fully functional and touchpad friendly user interface. Just watch my video that I've linked to here to see just how easy that interface is to build. You will be using the items you've configured and attaching those items to widgets on the Hap Panel UI. This really is the easiest and quickest way from a bare open Hap installation to a fully usable home control system. But we will keep going and in the next video we'll start looking at sitemaps and the user interfaces that require them. Then we'll take it another step further and learn about writing your own rules, which will turn your open half control system into an actual home automation system. So subscribe and hit the notification icon to keep track of the new videos I publish on this series and other topics. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. Thank you. And until next time, this is BK Hobby.